In the next video of our introduction to Civil 3D, we're going to take a look at some dialog boxes that are very specific to Civil 3D itself. And they fundamentally change how Civil 3D works and, and where we put our objects. Now in normal AutoCAD, you would be used to going into the units command and setting your drawing units. However, this is not the way to change the drawing units. The only uh, reason I come in here is to change the insertion scale, units to insert scale, uh, units to scale inserted content at. Whether we get a drawing in feet or meters or whatnot, we, I come in here to change that. Nothing else in here I change. You can change the clockwise and the direction. So where do you want north to be? Where, uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to go clockwise or counterclockwise with your angles, etc.? However, what we do want to look at is under the C at the top here, we're going to go Drawing Utilities and Drawing Settings. Now this dialog box here is how Civil 3D functions. What units are you drawing in? Is it feet or is it meters? So you get feet, you get meters. Now being in Canada, we'll leave this on meters. If you're in the United States, obviously choose feet. And then there's a couple conversions. So an international foot or a US survey foot, uh, one foot is 0 0.3048 meters. This scale here refers to your viewport scale, your drawing scale. And do we want to measure in degrees, grads, or radians? So I'm going to leave it on degrees. Now you can change things in here. However, the fundamental thing we need to set up in here is our zone. So not just units, zone. And when I talk about zones, I'm talking about coordinate systems. If we click this drop down here, we can see that there are a large number of countries in here with their coordinate systems. Now the ones in Canada itself, you can find under lat longs. So there is a coordinate system for Canada under lat longs. And looking through the list, we're gonna to go to Canadian Spatial Reference System, which comes up with the code LL-CSRS. You can type these codes in this dialog box down here to make things easier. So I'll just go up there, LL-CSRS. That is a Canadian Spatial Reference System. So this is the lat long. There's also Canada Country and Grid. These ones give us different options. Equal, Albers equal area, NAD 27. Now NAD 27 is a 1927 coordinate system. I don't recommend using that. NAD 83 is newer and that's the one we use in Canada's uh, UTM 83. However, I don't think I've ever had to use a coordinate system under the country and grid, but Canada provinces is another place we can find it. So again, Alberta, NAD 27, 1927, Alberta, NAD 83. The NAD 83 are the, obviously the newer ones and you would choose the one you want. Again, you would just come in here. You could type this quick code in. Nova Scotia, Ontario. So there's quite a few here. If we scroll down a bit farther and look at UTM. So there's UTM, WGS, 72, 84, NAD 27, NAD 83. So I'm going to go into NAD 83. And a lot of the Canadian ones are in here. UTM, NAD 83, zone 10, 11, 12, give or take, is in Alberta. So UTM 83-10. And again, if you just want to change the number, 11, 12, 13, 14. We had an F to it, it's foot and international foot would be IF. So just quick codes there. I believe there is some under the, yeah, UGS or WGS datums. So again, some are located there as well. So the, the we want to set up a coordinate system because in the civil world, we rely on real world coordinates. We rely on real world locations. I will design a product uh, project in a certain part of the world. And that is reference based off usually what's the equator and a meridian that runs along with the latitude, longitude, grid, really. So I will design a project based off the equator, which is a known point and how far we are away from the equator. And that's why we want to set up a coordinate system. 
That way I can send my project to a contractor and they can plug it into their GPS enabled machines and do their work from there. So set up your coordinate system, absolutely set that up. It will make sure your project is in the right location. And again, usually most of my work is in UTM 83-12. Now transformation, we can transfer from one coordinate system to another and even um, grid to ground, I believe in this. So it is possible. I've never had to play with this. I just insert my points in the proper coordinate system when I do it. Another powerful tool inside of the drawing settings is object layers. So what these do, so we're just gonna look at the alignment right now. So my object is in alignment. When I make an alignment, it is going to default to the layer C-ALIN. So it is going to automatically go on that parent layer. Parent versus child, we'll talk about that a little bit later in another video. So C-Align, I have it modified by a suffix with a value of dash star. So the dash is gonna put a dash in the layer, so it'll be C-ALIN dash. And what the star does is it takes the object name, Whatever I name my alignment, it takes that object name and appends it to the end of the layer. So it'll produce C-ALIN-50th dash dash Street, for example. And I'll make an alignment to show you how that works. So a lot of these can be set up with the automatic layer. So you could just come in and start drafting and not need to worry about putting objects on layers. It puts tables on layers, labels on layers. Uh, fittings on there. So I've got this all set up to do do that work for me. And if you notice, not everything has a suffix, specifically sections, because when you make one section, you're probably making a thousand at once, you're going to get a thousand different layers. So we'll just remember C-ALIN for when I make one. Abbreviations. So how do we want things to look in our drawing? Tangents to curves. Spirals to tangents. I know what ST means, but if you're brand new into Civil 3D, you may not know what it means. So if you're um, new to Civil 3D, come in here and just rename these spiral to tangent. When you put in a, a label, it will be spiral to tangent. Say alignment end, alignment beginning, spiral to spiral, tangent to spiral, etc. There are some calculations here or labels, how the labels work. Under super elevation, there's more abbreviations. So feel free to come in here and change these if you need to. That way your label shows the whole name, the whole item. And then ambient settings. This is how Civil 3D also works. So if I expand general, plotted unit display type, okay, that's probably a bad one. Degree of curvature labeling, command line, time. Okay, so time, I want it in hours, precision of one, unit list, precision of three. So this is where we can set up our precisions as well. It's not just enough to change it under, if we type units, chances are that won't affect what we're doing. We need to come in here. When I measure a distance, I want a unit of meter, precision of three, so it'll go 0 0.001. Dimension as well, unit, meter, precision three. Coordinates, the same thing. Unit meter precision three. So all of these can be set up to uh, to give you what you wanna see within Civil 3D. So that was the drawing utilities, drawing settings part of Civil 3D. And again, just a quick intro into Civil 3D here, take you through some very important dialog boxes, especially the units and zone here. I cannot stress this enough that set up a coordinate system. If you send your drawing to a survey or without a coordinate system, they'll be contacting you back right away. Okay, what system is this in? And hopefully you'd know that the answer to that, but just set the system up so it's there in your drawing. To finish up this video, I'm going to demonstrate the automatic layering when we create a simple alignment here. Keep in mind that this does work with every other Civil 3D object. So I'm just gonna draw a quick polyline here and turn it into alignment from a polyline. So as we see down here, the alignment layer matches what we saw in the drawing utilities drawing settings, C-align-star. 
We can go into here and modify it as well. However, it's already been set up. So I'm just gonna name this, I'll name it 50th Avenue. And as you see down below the layer, it is going to create a layer C-align-50th Avenue. I'll hit okay. And it's gonna take a little bit of time because I think I'm quite zoomed out and it's creating a long alignment here. So now I'll zoom in. And when I select the alignment, we see up here the layer that is created C-align-50th Avenue. And if I hit escape and click on the labels, C-label-align-50th Avenue. So it's created those layers for me. And likewise, if I create an if I create another alignment, let's make a short one over here. And we'll just name it 40th Street. So this alignment here is 50th Avenue. This alignment here is 40th Street. So it helps organize your drawings. It keeps them separate uh, when we want to freeze stuff. I can freeze this alignment only. I could freeze these labels only, etc.